Okay, now can you see me? Okay, yes. Should I go to some other layout like this? Okay, now. Okay, I'll check with students and just message them. Yeah, I'm seen in one corner. I'll, uh, you, you just check, sir. I'll, I'll ask these students. Can you hear me now? Can you see me and hear me now? Yes, thank you, Mujib. So my uh, voice is audible, right? Okay, I'll just wait for two, two minutes. Okay, thank you, Buja. We'll just wait for two minutes and then uh, start off, let people join. Yes, sir. No, ma'am. Still not audible. Uh, the students are telling yes, ma'am. Okay, then go ahead. No? I know they. I'm just waiting for some to join. There are twenty who is who are joined, and I, I can show you this one second, sir. See, it is showing like this, and uh, okay, what I see is not. Uh, please check again the thing. Some are telling that. They are able to see me. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. They are telling me. No, Puja. Okay, excellent. And, but uh, some messages are coming in the group that the link is no more available. I will, I will share again. The same link, no? Same link. Show me the link. Uh, I'll go to this. Yes. Uh, A68LGO. Yes, right? yes, yes. Yeah, I will, I will check it. But I'm not able to see here anything, sir. What is this? How do I check this? Which one? Here. I'm not able to see anything here. I think for you it may not be. Is it? Well, so, the, the, that's why I wanted somebody to check and tell me. Uh, what, what does these students mean? I don't understand. Nutan, but it is now visible now. No, here in in YouTube, I'm not able to see live. Here it is fine. Streamyard, I'm able to see. Okay. In uh, YouTube, I'm not able to see.
Yeah, no, sir. Yes. Yeah. No, no, I'm able. No, I'm able to see. YouTube, may I'm able to see. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Okay, I think I should use the voice for me. Yeah, I'll go ahead. Okay, I'll mute here in YouTube. Okay, students, there are 30 who have joined. I'll just go ahead. Let them join. Yes, madam, please. Okay. Yeah, I think it's... Yeah, good. Thank you. Thank you. Is it fine now? Shall we start? Please reply in the chat box. Yes, thank you. Uh, okay, there are around 37, 28. Can we just wait for two more minutes and then start up? Okay, good morning. Good to get connected. Um, I'm Dr. Seema. Uh, so, um, Dr. Rwani would have taken unit one for you in these biological sciences. So, uh, it's mandate that these days you learn the subject of biosciences. Why is it uh, important? Like, uh, you have to understand why do we need to study biology, okay? Like you might be, uh, like as Satvik is telling you, you know everything. I'll just let you know what exactly is happening around today. And in this context, so I want uh, the people to stop chatting and just listen to this process. I'll take you through some of the slides that are there, which will help you understand why is biological science important. So this unit talks about career opportunities and entrepreneurship relevant to technology being involved in uh, biosciences. So I'll take you through the slides to initially make you understand why engineering is clubbed with biology today? Take it in this pandemic only, you'll have an idea of what is happening around and uh, how many engineers are involved in various techniques that are involved in, in, the, in overcoming this COVID phase. Okay, so we talk about biological sciences. Having a knowledge of biological sciences is something like icing on a cake. So you have to understand it's just not um, uh, engineering that you get specialized in you can do a lot of wonders you can contribute to the society uh, this biology has a societal direct societal application that is there so what we will go through initially are some of the uh, slides to understand how biosystem needs an engineering aspect and what are the milestones that we have achieved till now and what are the other important criteria we can still follow to get into that mode. So if you can see my slide two, I just want you to be aware 
of a concept called biomimetics. Most of the inventions or innovations that are there in engineering is uh, biomimetics. You mimic nature. You know that around you, just keep your ears and eyes open and see what is around you and see if you can replicate the same in the engineering aspect. That is the need of biology. If somebody is uh, constructed a building, self-cooling office building, it is because of uh, uh, the termite den that they have influenced with. There is a government uh, municipal building in Qatar, Doha, built completely uh, on, on this termite mold concept without any aid of, uh, uh, what do you call, ACs there because it is a, a place, a deserted place with a very high temperature and most of the year they need ACs, but that is built in such a way that they don't need AC. So how is that they have influenced with the termite mold? If you take a cross-sectional study of a termite den or a mold that is there, what you understand is a thing like this, uh, a, 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 a den like this, which we always consider to be a snake's house. But this is built by termites where snakes reside. So this is a concept with which a construction is being uh, biomimicked. So this is a building, cooling office building without AC influenced by a termite mold. Same way, if I take a topic of energy, a whale edged fins are the ones that, that are influenced and people have used that energy efficient turbine blades in windmills on this basis. Then we have medical where shark skin Shark skin is so well studied that it gives an antibacterial space, uh, surface. So you have some of the paints that are influenced by this. Not only that, why do sharks move so faster? Why do they have such good uh, uh, influence of uh, uh, moving fast as well as uh, energy reduction? So that's all because of the... Um, the scales that are lined up, the scales that are arranged on shark skin, that's been influenced by uh, scientists and people have adopted this. You might be aware of a concept of uh, packaging. We do use Velcro. All are familiar with this Velcro, which is so much in demand these days. To, to wherever you want to lock, you have a hook and a loop fastener. And that was influenced by one of the scientists who observed birds of uh, burdock uh, that sticked on to his dog and uh, his clothes. He, he then realized how firm they are. Can this be utilized in a societal application is when he took this up to understand that Velcro can replace the zips in uh, many other things. Today you talk about purses, you talk about uh, um, slippers, you talk about shoes, you talk about uh, many other things, bags, okay, kit bags where uh, the zips are, uh, are being replaced by this packaging system. Isn't that an engineering concept? So that has made so much of revenue in the process. And if uh, this uh, train in Japan is working well and has fetch, fetched up a good speed, with no noise, it's because of a um, bird watcher who is supposed to be the driver of that train who got influenced by Kingfisher's beak and thus he could come out with a similar shape to give a low resistance and noise train design. Then we can also get influenced by um, this thing, uh, what is this uh, lotus leaf? Lotus usually is seen in a muddy water, in a lake, okay? And if you observe the leaves carefully, they have a layer on, on, on it that uh, they'll not allow uh, any of the water droplet or dirt to sit on, okay? So it is structurally designed in such a way that the water rolls off. It won't spread on it. So that is one of... Uh, 
um, mimetic ability that scientists have used uh, utilizing this concept of lotus leaves uh, in coming out with self-cleaning paints or they are called hydrophobic paint surfaces. So you don't need one-time investment as in how it rains. There won't be any sort of dirt that sits on. It just washes off your building uh, very efficiently. So these are some of the things that I want to influence you by telling that all of these are involved, well, uh, involved in a biomimetic aspects where biology is the one that has influenced engineers to come out. Don't you feel that in each one of this, there were many um, mechanical engineers, computer engineers, electrical engineers, and uh, civil engineers, all of these people involved in the process. So that's how in each of your field, if you just keep your eyes and uh, ears open and get influenced by any of the facts of nature around, uh, you can come out with uh, uh, invention. So that would help uh, a problem that exists in society. So that's how I just want you want uh, you to see some of these things in detail. Few examples I have taken where engineers have come out with this. Uh, I'll tell you what is there in this particular unit. We will talk about the applications. We'll talk about the influence of this in. Uh, uh, biomedical engineering, bioengineering, or uh, medical technology. Many different branches are there, which we will go through with career opportunities. So whichever field you are in, if you can adopt or get influenced by biology or have a knowledge of what is biology, then that's that, may, that brings out a lot of uh, inventions. So that shark skin that I was talking about, is constructed by overlapping of scales. So nature through evolution has ensured that water flows over the scales extremely efficiently, helping the shark to reach high speeds. So this is a, a scanning electron microscopic structure that is depicted here to understand the overlapping and the ridges that are there on the scales. And with this shark uh, moves quite faster. Not only that, it's also uh, observed that uh, special alignment and uh, grooved structures of those denticles embedded in shark skin decreases drag, I believe. And this is the principle behind. So thus greatly increasing the swimming efficiency. And with this nature, it's just not Airbus uh, that is created, which had 1.5% uh, uh, down of fuel consumption when uh, this sort of uh, paint or shark skin is coated uh, similar st structural features are coated on an aircraft it is also possible to increase the efficiency of uh, uh, the speed by four percent by adjusting those riblets so bringing an increase of speed up to 1.56 percent so all these are the evidences that people have shown with the study of this biological as until unless uh, you don't know the structure of what shark skin is about you will not develop this so the results of the use of these riblets are a reduction of the total drag a higher glide ratio and a better handling of the aircraft just not this people have come out with speeding boats also with the same uh, coat and similar swimsuits were used in the latest Olympic Games. So those who did use this could improve their uh, efficiency of swimming and have won uh, uh, prizes for. And th these are the facts. You can just Google and see. I don't have to tell you. You can just Google and see the influence of just one that is shark skin uh, being influenced in air buses, speeding boats, and swimming suits. So that was one of a biomimetic uh, nature that one can go through. And this was Velcro that I was talking about. It's just a two strip uh, uh, material and see who was influenced by this. I'm just telling you all of these examples to make you understand that it's all engineers who were around, who are not biologists, but with their uh, uh, interest and with their personal uh, uh, 
uh, involvement, they, they did come out with these engineering materials, engineered materials. So small hooks enable seed bearing fur to cling on to tiny loops in fabric as well as onto dog's hair when in 1941, a Swiss engineer, George D. Mestrel, took his dog to a walk and he observed the burrs that stuck onto his dog's hair and under the microscope he noted that's again by his interest that he noted that the tiny hooks on the end of the bird's spine that caught anything with a loop such as clothing or hair or animal fur will give that fastening so as a result the firmness was so well that uh, uh, the, he, he just uh, thought of engineering that with this uh, material of hooks on one side and uh, uh, just a material loop on the other side. If you can, just check in for one Velcro and observe how are these hooks engineered. So thus, he came out with this two-part Velcro fastener system that uses strips or patches of a hooked material opposite strips or patches of a loose uh, looped weave of nylon uh, that holds the hooks so that is how he invented this material and today there is such a good market for this and he got all his all the laurels because of this observation which he um, replicated in the engineering aspect of it and he showed the applications in many ways then I, I spoke about the kingfisher's beak there is a story behind this also that this became the model of the nose cone of japan's 500 series shinkansen bullet train okay it doesn't mean that before this there was no bullet train there were bullet trains but uh, the uh, driver could observe the engineer could observe one problem that was there so what was that problem was the fastest train in the world at uh, speeds of up to 200 miles per hour is the Japan's Shinkansen bullet train. And this was a mar mar marvel of modern technology, what scientists and uh, engineers had come out with. But they had one major problem associated with was noise. Each time the train emerged from the tunnel, it caused a change in air pressure and that caused thunder-like sound. And that was a nuisance from a quarter of a mile away. So the train's chief engineer was a bird watcher. And he got this idea, taking an inspiration from the shape of a bird's beak, especially this kingfisher beak, because of its aerodynamic feature. From such a distance, it can just uh, get into the uh, sea to find its prey, okay? And it just picks up. And imagine if a bird has to fly, it, it will definitely make some noise. And with that noise, there will definitely be uh, these uh, fishes moving out. But with this uh, con con concept of kingfisher that he observed, it could, it could easily fetch up the prey. So, so with that feature of its beak and the shape of the body, it, it makes at that point of time, the resulting design was based on that narrow profile of a kingfisher's beak. And uh, then he realized that it is the beak that is helping out in catching the prey with that noise-free uh, uh, surrounding. So that resulted in a quieter train and uh, that also consumes 15 percent less electricity i believe and goes 10 percent faster than before so all these are the inspirations that these engineers got so the next uh, thing is uh Jekko tape i don't know if you have heard of this uh, uh this animal uh, or a reptile called Jekko. Jekko is a lizard, nocturnal lizard, which has this adhesive pads on the feet to assist in climbing on smooth surfaces. It can be so firm, it can be so firm that 
uh, people can climb uh, with a, a rope tied to it. So that's how in uh, history we have learned that these Jekko lizards were used by enemies to climb the fort wall. So thus Jekos hang single toed from walls and walk along ceilings using its fine hairs on the feet. It comprises of lamellae and uh, equipped with setae and each setae has a spatula. It's just for the observation that the scientists have done under the microscope that these are the features that are there. And uh, scientifically, what was observed was these nanoscale spatulae interact with the wall atoms with a van der Waals force. Okay, so that gave an adhesive system that demonstrates a high friction. So there was no glue, there was nothing of that sort. It's just the arrangement of that lamellae and the, the seta and the spatula that is there, which helps in the firm uh, adhesion onto it. It's not a glue to permanently stick onto, but this was the influence that scientists took through and thus they came out with something called as Jekko tape. And it is a material covered with those nanoscalic hairs that mimic those found on the feet of Jekko lizards. So these millions of tiny flexible hairs thus exerts a van der Waals force that provide a powerful adhesive effect. And it is told that one square centimeter of a Jekko tape could support one kilogram of anything, a weight. It can just hold, just imagine, one square centimeter of the Jekko tape that is engineered can hold this. University of California, Berkeley created an array of synthetic microfibers using this high friction to support the loads on smooth surfaces. So these Jekko footed robots were created to climb to the roofs. Not only that, people came out with these training shoes uh, to uh, uh, the uh, maybe the sports uh, um, persons or for those involved in trekking and all of these there's uh, there are many companies who have uh, in who are involved in adopting this principle of jeco and uh, coming out with uh, many uh, grip shoes uh, for efficiency so this is one more biomimetic uh, thing that i wanted to talk about and you all are uh, familiar with uh, a company called Qualcomm. So again, engineers at Qualcomm are influenced by butterfly's wing. What's the feature of that? That nature's remarkable material it is with tiny uh, but complex structures reflecting light in such a way that specific wavelengths interfere with each other to create an intensely vivid colors. Okay, so this effect was adopted by engineers at Qualcomm and uh, they, you might be a part of Qualcomm in future. So what do, what have they done is they have produced colored uh, electronic screens that are extremely efficient and can be viewed under any light conditions. Believe me, if I'm talking about all of these examples, it's not a biologist who has done that. It's a, a nature's admirer who has looked into all of these things and have uh, been involved in the process. So that's how an engineer can get influenced. And there is a mandate that one know the biology around so that you bring in an advancement in uh, the societal application. So that was one example. And I think I'll end up with one more example like this, like. Uh, the important features of a spider. So what is a spider? Spider, as you all know, is such a uh, tiny insect that is there with long legs and a flexible thing. So the ability of that to squeeze through tight spaces and turn on a dime makes a spider an ideal model for life-saving robots to be created in the same. So we need robots, life-saving robots in many places of disasters that uh, have happened. Um, either uh, a fire uh, accident or um, rubble 
of disaster that uh, where there is a need to locate the survivors uh, a human cannot uh, enter uh, where there may be toxic gases released where a human cannot enter uh, so researchers at germany's uh, fraunhofer institute say that this robot can be cheaply reproduced using a 3D printing model. And 3D printing is also the scaffolds that one has influenced using uh, biological uh, aspects. And after natural catastrophes and uh, industrial or reactor accidents or in fire department, it can help responders, for instance, by broadcasting live images or tracking down hazards or leaking gases. So that's how cameras and sensors fitted in it can help uh, detectors uh, in a good manner. So thus, spider is also being influenced by engineers. Then we have, uh, these are the biomimetic aspects. Not only that what exists in our body is also important. If we talk about our nervous system that is there, it's just a nerve. If I put my finger into a hot cup of coffee, within a fraction of a second, I pull my finger out. Why do I do that is my sensory system, influenced by the nervous system, has a structure like this where I have neurons. Okay, So I have dendrites I have, uh, and those dendrites take the message and pass it on to nucleus based cell body and that is called soma and uh, interprets the result in axon and passes to the next nerve cell through synapse the junction that is called synapse so one of this is a nerve cell that connects to one more that connects to one more and hence from the finger to the central nervous system there are many nerves connected which takes the information to the central nervous system at the, in, in the spine that is there. From there, the information goes to uh, the brain. The brain interprets the result and sends the message back to withdraw the finger because it is hot. I have taken so much time to explain this process, but the nervous system would take a fraction of a second to uh, implement that result. So what is happening with this is that there is an input to that nervous system. There is interpretation that is happening. There is summing up of the process that is happening. And there is an information that is released as an output. So with these things happening, people realized that they can come out with a similar thing today of artificial neural network. Artificial neural network is a similar pattern. So if this is our natural nervous system, nerve, ne nerve network that is there, this is artificial neural network with the similar aspect of many neuron inputs given. And then it decides. Maybe at the same time you are uh, watching my video. At the same time, there is a plate of breakfast on your table. You want to eat. There is something you are picking up. There are many things, multiple things you might be doing uh, on the other end. At this point of time, at this point of time, you have to give way to what is to be given a priority first. So that is what is called input weights. It decides on which is to be given importance. And that weights give and get um, processed through summing up function or then activation function and gives an output. So if this system has to be designed, it is software engineers who can do this. Artificial neural network is one of the subject you will be studying in future, influenced by the uh, nervous system of humans. So that's how if there are many uh, Internet of things that are available in market today, it's all due to biology and a biological application. If you have Alexa with you or uh, if you have sensors or if you have a glucometer at home, all of these things, they link, they pass them. You have smart watches, so Apple Watch. So all of these are influenced by nature's thing. Now you might be aware of why biology is important. 
just not that i have listed out few of the things that are uh, highly advantageous today uh, if you take this stream of getting specialized in whichever field you are but having a knowledge of biology and coming out with a device such are the patents that are there such uh, are the credits that engineers have taken if you have come across a glucometer at home a glucose uh, insulin level is what i need to be checked uh, in the body for a condition called diabetes if that has to be assessed earlier it used to be a long uh, day to go to the doctor uh, to a lab before breakfast one assessment having breakfast staying there for one and a half uh, hour getting it checked once again uh, post breakfast and then uh, meeting a doctor and getting to know what the status is with the reports and all of these things was a pain today if there is a diabetic patient at home they can just buy this simple device handy device that is called glucometer and uh, it's it's just a patient on the bed that one can test before breakfast have is um, have breakfast sleep again for one and a half hour and then check uh, the glucose level so the standard we know what it should be so if you know the standard you will have an idea whether everything is going normal or there is a need for you to consult a doctor or if there is a need for insulin dose to be taken more so that's how these days diabetic patients are managing their glucose level with the help of a glucometer in the market so what is this glucometer how i am i talking about with engineers here is because there are four things that are there needed in a biosensor this is a device of biosensor it's a biologist who will tell what is the analyte and what is the receptor that is there so analyte that is here is glucose present in the blood the device and the strip is made in such a way that it filters out the cells of the blood and it takes only the serum to assess the glucose it's the amount of glucose that is needed to be assessed so that glucose reacts with glucose oxidase that is embedded in the strip that is there and uh, when glucose is a substrate and you all might be familiar with a substrate and an enzyme lock and key model that is revealed so with this the substrate is converted to product by a catalytic activity of an enzyme which produces electrons if these electrons are trapped by the instrument it is an electrical electronics engineer who can build in a device with transducers embedded in it amplifiers embedded in it and uh, display unit embedded in it it's so easy display it's sometimes there may be graphical representations sometimes there may be a color representation and sometimes a digital display like this so all these are the devices that are handy today because of engineers only so it's the biology that took into their aspect and uh, they came out with a device like this so this is a uh, engineer who is designed and even today people are working with and uh, this is such a handy instrument in sale that many companies releasing out their products as handy as possible with many features incorporated into it with the unit also represented inside so it just takes 5 seconds if some of you have this at home please check uh, when people assess the blood glucose it's just a prick and it's just uh, a drop not even a drop fraction of a drop of blood that me, uh, that is needed and as in how the blood enters the instrument reads 5 4 3 2 1 1 once it reads so it displays the value it is so fast and so efficient just not that if you have come across uh, people going through eeg and ecg i don't know how many of you watch this uh, shark tank today there are many new innovators who come there for uh, funding and uh, that's when i also came across a similar simple model of uh, ecg that is made handy by some of the scientists again they were not uh, uh, biologists they are engineers who did learn about biology of how uh, our nerve impulse cardiac impulse 
and the reading of this which goes into the mobile help in the processing there is a telemonitoring system that goes with today it's a process of patient uh, somewhere and uh, doctor seated somewhere a device with the patient an old patient can help a doctor assess through his mobile in his place and suggest a treatment or suggest a uh, findings for the patient so that is the efficiency that is there today and if if a, a accident happens on road or if there are any other sort of mental uh, trauma that is there around it is an electroencephalography that is done which gives you an analytical reading so what is this all about it's a combination of computer engineers electrical engineers and other mechanical people who come out designing uh, the thing and today software is needed everywhere a cad and many other things so people do design and if we are talking about a simple handy rapid antigen test kit okay do you feel only biologists have done this no it's all engineers who are involved in coming out with a strip design like this with just a drop of uh, uh, sample throat uh, swab sample that is put here with the saline with the help of a, uh, a swab a sterile swab that you will get to see a result instantly with only one colored line appearing in the control and if you see a similar line here in the test the test is said to be positive otherwise the test is said to be negative as simple as this with no electrical uh, nodes involved here and some of these engineered uh, products that are there with uh, electrical digital uh, almost all the things softwares programming all that is required in the process so as big instruments as ecg if you have come across in any of the hospital or google and see it's a very big instrument but these days it is made portable to carry in a pocket that would save that half an hour of a uh, damage caused or um, disturbance caused to the heart can lead to a fatal condition those things can be avoided so these are some of the aspects that one should be aware of as engineers forget about a glucometer today the advancement that is there today in uh, nature in 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 around are your smart watches that you have pebble so what you wear will tell you uh the saturation of oxygen the steps that you have uh, put in for the day okay and um, the glucose level at times apple watches come out with a glucose level tool so all these sensors are adopted in different ways in different places so it's not a pain having a sensor onto the body if there is a condition of juvenile diabetes that is diabetes seen in kids they have to live the rest of the life with uh, diabetes so how can they manage if the sugar level goes down or high it is fatal okay so a device that has come out as a pump fitted on to a patient okay now just not assess the glucose level it will have insulin in it which pump which gets pumped into the body as and how it required so the parents and the child can be carefree with not so many uh, injections given on to the uh, child for uh, thing it's one time um, in, in, implanting on to the uh, patient that can help the uh, ch child survive uh, that juvenile diabetes so these are some of the facts that are there you don't need to be uh, invasive today if i talk about glucometer that one prick or two pricks a day before breakfast and after breakfast is required there but we talk about non invasive devices today not to have that prick also so people have uh, realized until at least the scientists uh, or engineers didn't realize that this glucose can be there in sweat also can be there in tears also can be there in saliva also uh, you cannot engineer that so if these architectural things have come out like smart contact lenses with a sensor embedded in it put into a diabetic patients and um, these sensors connected to an app in a mobile at a stipulated time at half an hour uh, once or uh, 
one hour, early once the reading is displayed of what your sugar level or glucose level is. So just glucose can be assessed with tears that are there in the eyes that assessed by contact lenses. Then there are there is lactate and glucose that can be assessed by eye glasses that you wear. Uh, mouth guard can help assess uh, uric acid. Graphene based tooth sensors are there which are embedded in the tooth for assessing bacteria. Microfluid sensors are there uh, which can assess lactate and glucose. Nanomaterial is one of a trend today based. Uh, batches are there that can be put onto the body which can assess glucose. A uh, lot of such things. You can have tattoos. It looks like a tattoo on your uh, body, but it is actually an integrated sensor array that is put up. So these are some of the things. Variable diagnostics that are there today help assess a lot of things around. There are uh, uh, chemical and physical hybrid sensor patches that are put up on the body. Or there are smart t-shirts that are there which are owned by the patients with sensors fitted onto the organs located. So that can be a, um, a engineered product. So that's all what I wanted to talk about initially to make you understand that this is why you need to know biology. Until unless you don't know biology and it, especially in this pandemic, you might have, all of you know what is a vaccine today. Earlier, you might not be aware of though you have taken some five to six or five to 10 vaccines in your childhood, you might not be aware of what vaccine was till now. Now all of us know and we take little more uh, uh, deep uh, knowledge on which vaccine to take, whether it has to be a COVID shield or a co-vaccine, or you all I'm sure will be aware of a difference between a COVID shield and a co-vaccine. Sometimes you were adamant on going with COVID shield only, and you know what? organizations are involved in such uh, processes you know what who is today and you know a concept of immune immune boosting and when i tell immunity you all might be aware of the term what immunity is and if it is immunity uh, how do we boost our immunity so all have worked all have been um, illiterate also knows today what is immunity what is covid virus so until unless we are not influenced by that biological system, we don't know the depth of it. It can it can create a havoc throughout the world. It's just a nano scale and nano material uh, virus that has created a havoc. Can't we have a control over? It's a combination of scientists, engineers, and pharma companies that have come out for the rescue take it diagnosis or take it treatment or uh, take it therapy, whatever is around is a combination of all the engineers working together and coming out with device. And in this pandemic, if all of us were, and many of uh, the people have lost jobs, and if all were at home, it's only the pharma industry, it is only the biotech industry that is boomed. Talk about pharma, any of the pharma, just forget about uh, the people who are working with vaccine internationally or at a national level. A lot of fundings were all deviated to them. Forget about those. For, imagine a company who is making throat swab. Okay, how many swabs would have been used on one patient? So it was made mandate in many. So companies boomed with one uh, making uh, swabs, uh, the one making that uh, transport media, you all might have come across that pink color media that was there in a, a centrifuge tube. So that media preparation, all entered into that media preparation. Uh, the micro pipettes that are used or those uh, plastic tubes that were needed for each one of us for assessment and the device for vaccines that are there, the needles, the syringes, uh, the, for, apart from that, the sanitizers. Imagine all the pharma industries moved their reactors in producing sanitizers. So ethanol-based, gel-based, how many varieties of sanitizers that were there? People came out with uh, Savlon, just forgot doing just that soap and uh, uh, the antiseptic uh, lotion that they were into. They came out with uh, 
uh, uh, disinfectant sprays they came out with uh, uh, these sanitizers so don't you feel all of these did boom whoever were directly or indirectly related to covid uh, uh, protocols or covid process me all did a thing and uh, to in a, in my case uh, there were some of uh, one course i run where students do uh, a diploma a short term course on clinical research clinical research uh, it was just that march when they finished and i had to place them and uh, to my surprise all of the students were like uh, in demand so much that i could place within 8 days all the 20 students with good high profile uh, package salaries uh, where they sat at home they got the laptops at home the companies um, pharma company did send them the data there were many uh, computer engineers who could uh, tran translate themselves to this era of uh, data management uh could do that job and uh, they got the laptops even till today uh, since march 2020 till now the two years they are sitting at home working and getting the salary comfortably at uh, home so they were all basically engineers who did this crash course of understanding the biological aspects and the clinical trials that goes with because that was the trend where people were testing on humans doctors do that nurses do that but the data that is collected has to be presented so computer engineers do a lot of coming out with algorithms softwares to uh, ease the process of uh, data management so that was the need of software engineers there coming out with these uh, de detective devices of uh, temperature checking devices or oximeters that were there don't you feel all of those companies boomed now because every household have a uh, oximeter at home to check that saturation level of oxygen because that was a threat that was there so that is the demand that is the need of engineers knowing biology in just one of this pandemic we have understood how uh, how people panicked how people got to know what biology is how to keep ourselves safe what is the importance of those masks that we have to put what is the difference of n95 and the other masks that are there how protective are these just imagine and think of all the things that are around us today and we are revolving around the things that we have to get protected from covid 19 so it's just that nanometer scale virus that created and havoc and just sit and recall all that pharma industry and all of these manufacturing industries who came out with the masks and other the business that you see today around is the one that is around this covid only so such is an era such is a demand that you have to focus on and until unless you don't know what a virus is what a spike protein is virus you know it is something that cannot live on its own it is a non living thing which enters into a living thing to be alive so it has to have a human cell to live in it cannot live on its own you might have read how long will it be there on a surface maximum 20 minutes some of these variants today we talk about mutation happening we talk about alpha beta gamma uh, delta and all of these variants coming out so what is the variation what are those mutants are you not looking into what is biology here we talk about dna this is basically an rna and we hear a term called rt pcr what is rt pcr you are familiar with that also so with interest you would have googled what do they do exactly in rt pcr it's just like a xerox machine which amplifies the uh, rna convert initially rna into dna and uh, make copies of dna to understand whether the virus is there in our throat swab or not that is how rt pcr is said to be a genuine result many reagents are involved in the process of rt pcr so all of those pharma companies and other companies have boomed today because of these things so that's what i wanted you to get familiarized with and take you through uh, the main aspects of you need to are the career opportunities in biotechnology 
biomedical engineering, pharmaceutical industry, agrobiotechnology, and in the diverse area of science and medical research. There is this emerging collaboration that's happening between industry and academia for the development of entrepreneurship in biotechnology. I'll give you a few live examples of what is entrepreneurship. And this is just not all. Whatever I spoke to you now is all about uh, uh, medical field, medical field and its application. If I have to talk about agrobiotechnology, in this pandemic only, don't you feel people did try what is called composting, handling their own wet waste? They concentrated on gardening these days. They concentrated on having their own biofertilizers. People are moving towards something called organic today. Don't you feel they are into this? And uh, there is one more thing that uh, was hype in this pandemic because all engineers were sitting uh, at home working on uh, uh, working from home. So they had a lot of time to spend on hydroponics, that is growing your own vegetables in uh, uh, water, just water based media. So that is the trend that was there. So all of these industries who were into boomed today, you just look into Amazon, you get almost all of these products available. This instant uh, uh, COVID uh, test strip was just available in those uh, hospitals earlier, but now they are available in any of the medical shop. You just can buy, get it tested. Uh, there is a thing of efficiency, but then also if you want, you can get it tested at home. It's made so easily available to a, a consumer. And if you have to sit at home and order, uh, in Amazon, you will get a very good hydroponic kit to come to you, very good fertilizers to come to you. Uh, if you want to uh, learn about uh, uh, in a small pot, you want to handle your own wet waste, you know the importance of wet, weight, uh, wet waste and uh, dry waste segregation today. And if you can handle all your wet waste at home, it is so good that you can have some simple composting units you can order again online within thousand rupees you will be able to get a small kit to do on your own just not that uh, you want to order earthworms that's called vermi composting earthworms bring about the same composting process efficiently you can order earthworms also and uh, get a pro process done so these are some of the techniques that are there around. And if people have designed a portable vermicompost unit, if people have uh, designed a process of hydroponics, it's all engineers who have worked. It's all engineers who have studied what is required in nature and how can we improve on. So we are moving towards a trend of organic today. That's the agro industry that is there. We talk about biopesticides. We want to say no to the pesticides. We know the importance of how, uh, how uh, food influences in our immunity today. And all of these things is what we will be discussing in this particular unit. So with this, uh, I think you have uh, quite a good uh, knowledge now, uh, not questioning of why we need biology. So that is when its uh, government has made it mandate university level at UGC and uh, in AICT, it is made mandate that engineers study biology. How many of you will apply in your, uh, the, uh, in your career is uh, a different aspect. But if some of you also get influenced and it is a knowledge that you have to be aware of what you are how did you originate how are you surviving with uh, the biological things around that is fine at least with that knowledge you will survive or if some of you take this as an inspiration and contribute to one of this field of biomedical biotechnology or pharmaceutical industry or agro industry it will be a wonder. We have a lot of projects uh, associated with one uh, government agency at the center called eAgriN. So that is supported by DST, so Department of Science and Technology. Any engineer, if you want to write a proposal to come out with a device applicable in 
agriculture and environment, you will get good fundings. So you can do projects, you can do wonders. If you want to design an instrument to come out with biodiesel today or bioethanol today, you have a lot of fundings. All this is under environmental uh, biotechnology. Anything in electronics, E agri N is electronics in agriculture and CDAC is one of an organization who funds a lot of things and they want engineers or electronic engineers who work with uh, these aspects of anything in nature assessed through electronics. It is. It should be something like a small portable pH meter that you take to assess the amount of uh, acidity or alkalinity in effluent. Or you should have sensors designed to assess the total dissolved solids in the effluent. It is something like you have uh, um, uh, sensors uh, just to assess uh, the NPK value. NPK value contributes to the fertility of the soil, the nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. So if a small device can assess this, why not? Because these days, farmers go to the lab to get their soil assessed for fertility. Can we assess hydro, um, like uh, two of the components in soil, like humic acid and fulvic acid, they contribute to uh, fertility. Can a farmer get to know through a sensor, simple electronic device, whether his soil is good enough and fertile enough to be taken forward, or what is deficient, what is to be added to the soil to get a good yield. So that is the trend that is there. We did work on a lot of these projects. And today we have something called as electronic nose and electronic tongue available in market. We do have that with us. Handheld uh, biosensor devices are there. If on a Saturday evening and Sunday evening a police uh, traffic police uh, uh, person holds a simple device to check whether the driver is alcoholic or not okay and they fine a lot it's all based on uh, uh, electronics in biology that has worked it's just that uh, smell that is assessed and it is the principle of electronic nose the instrument is assessing uh, whether there is alcohol in the uh, breath or not so those are some simple devices that have come up in nature these are the ones that are around us see if you can just look around and contribute earlier they used to be tasters for in food industry there used to be people who used to assess the protocol of contamination in food but today it is electronic tongue which does a job and there is minimal error or bias that is there in these uh, things that are there. So we will look into those you are, you have taken an engineering subject. There is no question of you changing a branch or so just because of this asset biotechnologists will enter into the industries. Why, why we will be learning about career opportunities here is for you as a separate engineer of take it medical, uh, sorry, uh, mechanical, uh, computer, electronics, electrical, or civil, or uh, any other engineer can be associated or contribute to all of these industries. You need not be a specialist in that only. Having a knowledge, having a simple course done like this, and if in your curriculum, if they get to know that you have learned bio, biological sciences, it means you are potential enough to contribute to any one of this field that is uh, in demand today. So that is biotechnology, that is biomedical engineering, that is pharma. Uh, uh, so pharmacy is something like not only pharma people are involved. There are a lot of machineries involved in it. There is a lot of automation involved in it. It's all automated machines, no manual involvement at all. So in that case, automation or device designing or mechanical aspects of control all of these things are the engineers that are involved in so you can be associated to any one of this industry with this knowledge is what i'm trying to tell you here so that's uh, the career opportunities that i will uh, take you through now so i think at this point i'll just give you a 
break of five minutes and I'll resume back. Is that fine? Just take a break of five minutes. I will join back.
yeah shall i start back am i audible thank you abhishek so was that clear what i explained you of why this is important why biology is important hope i have inspired for all those questions of why should we study it's always that thought that would be there why engineers should study so that's how government also has looked into the importance of uh, requirement of some of these uh, biomedical agro medical agro uh, biotechnology or Uh, the other fields that are required environmental that do need a knowledge of uh, uh, biology i have worked with uh, some of the projects that uh, are related to electronics and uh, we have solved those uh, problems of understanding uh, the soil fertility using electronic nose so we have worked in collaboration with cdac and uh, have come out with lot of solutions like this so being in academia also you can just be there um doing some small projects uh, in college also just just get associated some of these i have published uh, research papers pertaining to civil engineering aspects you may not believe uh, i have worked with civil engineers uh, who uh, have used bacteria to heal the cracks that comes in uh, the thing in the walls so that logical application is what um, i guide students for i have worked with electronics uh, students to work on lot of biosensors in the labs you can tie up with electronic uh, faculty to understand this and uh, come out with projects related to any sort of sensor a simple sensor today required is in kitchen to assess the lpg gas leakage so small buzzing devices can be introduced which has a good market today so that's one that is there and you can be associated with any of these um, uh, diseases and uh, uh, environmental parameters that can be assessed with simple device today i am i want everything handy around me that is the demand so in this you people can contribute to we have this aspect of bioinformatics today where we need computer engineers to contribute to before going with an actual drug for a disease or therapy we do first look from uh, the computer point of view and that is called docking studies molecular docking is what we call we represent a dna or a protein or a carbohydrate any of these biomolecules in a pictorial representation that is where we need bio um, this engineers software engineers to design these things so today we have lot of applications related to bio informatics we do hypothetical uh, studies first and then see which drug may work best we work with lot of drugs with uh, docking studies and after that we will decide on which one to go with and when you do go practically you will definitely reduce with the numbers to be tested with the evidences that are there with uh, informatics so a combination of bio biological science and computer science is what is bioinformatics uh, mechanical with uh, instrumentation and biology is biomedical engineering or biomanufacturing in which one of this today it's all uh, software that can be on a palm top or on a uh, simple device that needs to be tested for that is important and molecular engineering is also there which is important so all of these things are very important for us so you have to have this knowledge so hope i have conveyed this message and take you through the career opportunities that are there uh, with Uh, this aspect of uh, biotechnology now um you can relate now that it is biology 
and engineering or technological application that is called biotechnology. So you have to have a knowledge of biological systems, living organisms or derivatives thereof to make or modify products or process for specific use. Depending on the tools and applications and the specialization you are into, you are categorized as bioengineering, biomedical engineering, biomanufacturing or molecular engineering. These are the four major fields what we work with. One is called red biotechnology, the other one is called green biotechnology, gray or white biotechnology and blue biotechnology. So red indicates medical biotechnology or what all we have um, learned about therapeutic and diagnostic protocols that we have in healthcare system is categorized under medical biotechnology. It is for the aid of healthcare improvement, new therapies, new diagnostic aids, as and how the requirement comes. So some two years back, 2019, May, there was nothing called mask that we had to wear other than allergic people who used to wear. There was nothing like um, having a knowledge of virus in a common man. There was nothing like uh, uh, anti antigen uh, rapid antigen testing kit that was there in market. No, that was the demand that was there. And see the involvement of pharma industry and the engineering uh, uh, engineers who were involved in the process of medical biotechnology. So medical biotechnology is that red biotechnology, what we call it as. So one can have interest towards this and get involved in this as engineers. Some of you who are interested not in anything medical related can also contribute to agricultural biotechnology. So agricultural biotechnology is green biotechnology where you want to increase the yield, you want to go towards hydroponics, you want to go towards organic produce, better crop production, you don't want any of the chemicals to be used, you want to enrich the nutrition in the existing material, existing fruit, existing uh, um, vegetable, <clears throat> that is where one can contribute to. Work towards the devices, the instruments that are involved in agriculture. Assessment as well as in the process of produce. So that's this. There are so many mechanical based uh, instruments that are involved in uh, crop um, um, crop uh, finalizing the crop material that is there. There are many um, instruments that are used in the process of uh, uh, the, the crops that they cut when they process and all of these things may they want very handy material. Wherever manual involvement can be reduced, you can contribute towards a simple machine, a simple device that can help farmers is there that where you can contribute as engineers. If you can contribute towards marine biotechnology, yes, again, some of the devices that are there where we are using biotech for improvement of marine or aquatic life, we can do it. There are, uh, there, there was this thing called uh, uh, oil spill that is there. It is an environmental pollution that happens uh, with many a cases. Imagine if there is an oil spill, is there a possibility that you separate oil from uh, water? So, no, just not possible. So in such cases, what we see is uh, a scientist, Indian origin and US-based scientist called Professor Anand Chakraborty. If you have interest, go Google his contribution that he came out with modification of a bacteria to handle that pollution in water. Now, no techniques, no engineering techniques could help. It's only bacteria modified and sprayed onto the oil spill that help degrade all those toxins. So that was the contribution of creating a super bug using a simple bacteria called Zodomonas that Professor Anand Chakraborty could do uh, in US. So that's, that's his contribution. So all of these are the important uh, uh, arenas that are there for engineers to explore biotechnology.
And of course, uh, you have a lot of contribution in industrial biotechnology. When I talk about industry, it can be a pharma industry, it can be an agro industry, or it can be uh, any any other industry. Uh, for example, uh, food industry also. In all of these, today we have automation, we have uh, uh, hygiene to be taken care. In all of these things, manual involvement is reduced, and we are. Uh, taking good care of the process in all of these automated machines that are uh, developed take it in simple uh, organization or pediatry industry called amul or kmf or nandini that is there around you can see if you happen to visit such uh, organizations uh, like mtr and other you will see that all of their uh, uh, processes are automated uh, forget about those uh, this, uh, what is this? Um, uh, Casey Das, uh, who makes rasgullas, they have automated uh, machines making uh, uh, that chana, uh, rolling it round, frying it, uh, sorry, uh, boiling it in um, water, uh, sweet water, all of these automated and standardized. So there is no compromise with the quality and the quantity that they get. Same thing, uh, they also take care of uh, gulab jamuns. Again, a pro procedure of automated machine develop, completely uh, taking care of frying that uh, um, uh, this thing, the gulab jamuns, and putting it into a sugar syrup. All those are automated. Packing, till packing, also automated. A process of roasting, powdering, and packing also in MTR is done with this automated machines. Chapati making machines are available in market. There is this organization called CFTRI, Center for Food and Technology Research Institute uh, in Mysore. We at Karnataka only have such good facilities around. DFRL is there, Defense Research Lab. All of these things, these people will give you projects to work in the field of improvement in food industry or in agricultural industry. So you can be associated with any of these food industry and other industries to bring in a change in revolution. That is where you can, you as engineers can contribute to in biology. So that is called white or gray bio, biotechnology for industrial scale. I need an instrument today to uh, make biofuel. You know, uh, the concept of renewable and non-renewable resources that are there around. If one fine day oil gets exhausted, we don't have uh, petrol and diesel and you know how the cost is going up. So if you have an alternative to this, why not? So many are working towards an alternative fuel. So we have biodiesel today, bioethanol today to work with. We blend it in proportion with the existing uh, uh, petro petrol and work so that the cost of it will also come down and one fine day you can conserve whatever is there. So if we can, simple vegetable oil at your home, used vegetable oil also, not the one that is fresh. After a few uh, times of frying, the vegetable oil is not good to be consumed. It has its own health effects. So it has to be discarded. Rather than discarding, if this is collected and processed through a simple trans-esterification protocol, you will be able to get biodiesel with one good raw material also coming out that is called uh, glycerol. So both glycerol and biodiesel are of applicable in industry. Glycerol is used in paint industry, so you get revenue out of it. So waste vegetable oil converted into biodiesel. And uh, I work with some projects with students where uh, we have standardized uh, fruit peels. In fruit peels also, it's a waste. You will discard it, throw it. It contributes to the landfills rather than sending that to the landfills. Can I use that? peels to extract the, the left out sugar also from that so that I ferment and convert that into bioethanol. And you know the importance of ethanol today in sanitizers. 
So this is one of our concept. Bioethanol can again be converted into fuels. So bioethanol can be used in many a ways. So we are trying to bring in engineers to design reactors for us to, uh, to, to handle that fermentation protocol. So these are some of the aspects uh, what one can think of. And these are the four areas called red, green, white, or gray, and blue area where people can contribute to. So you as engineers can see an interest in any of this field and contribute to. The topics of specialization where we uh, as biotechnologists work is in engineering the existing bacteria to bring in a better life, DNA technologies to understand whether the virus was DNA virus or an RNA virus, or can that be modified if an RT-PCR is designed and so many machines have come out today on what basis? And uh, if you have to come out with new drug, the drug delivery system, rational drug designing, stem cell research to come out with so many genetic disorders that are there. See if you can contribute to those disorders because some of the individuals born with those syndromes, born with the disorder, have to live with it. Can you improve on the protocol of their survival is where one can contribute to. Cancer has become so common these days. So um, the concept of that is uh, also important. Uh, so machines that are there relevant to cancer. I, earlier, hardly we had a specialized uh, cancer hospital. These days, we have many. Just in South Bangalore, we have so many cancer specialized hospitals. You can see a flow of patients into that hospital, just like any other hospital. Imagine each one of the person entering there into that hospital is a cancer patient. Either one, any one of it. It can be a skin. It can be a blood, or it can be a benign, or it can be uh, this thing. Uh, malignant. Any of these cancers are so common around because of our uh, uh, culture uh, or the eating habits or the stress levels that we are going through. It's become so common. So how can one remediate? How can one help in the process? There is, in, in our Bangalore, there is a hospital called HCG uh, that's very near to Lalbagh Road or uh, near Corporation that hospital has a cyber knife. Cyber knife is one such instrument seen in very few hospitals across the world, which is a robot that performs the surgery. There are some surgeries which uh, humans cannot or doctors and experts cannot do because of a fine specification of uh, the tumor linked to bone or to uh, the nervous system. A damage caused to one nerve uh, that runs along can damage the whole uh, body at times. So human can bring in that damage is why a cyber knife is uh, brought in or constructed. It's again the contribution of engineers who have designed that robot to perform the surgery at a precision that others cannot handle. And that is called cyber knife. If you have interest, Google and get to know what cyber knife is. So that is where engineers are involved, programmers are involved, designers are involved, manufacturers are involved. All of those people's contribution is an outcome that is called cyber knife. And then we have a subject of bioinformatics where I told you anything related to computer, computer programming and software algorithms and uh, design is where you involve biomolecules for study. It is called bioinformatics. So we take off we aid of uh, uh, computer engineers to help us with those uh, so softwares. We have one called Rasmol that we work with in lab, where a DNA or any biomolecule can be uh, seen of in a 3D model, in a ribbon model, in a stick model, or in a natural model, however you want. So I work on computer for drug drug target studies initially, and then go to uh, in vivo studies on initially in an in vitro on some cell lines. Then I test that drug onto lab animals, and then I test it on a group of population. That is what is clinical research that goes with uh, trials of phase one, phase two, phase three, and uh, phase 
other things. So if a pharma product has to come into market in a natural way, it would take years together to come. It's only some of those FDA and WHO approvals that based on demand, some are into market quite fast with testing on a few of the population. So that's informatics. So computer engineers can be associated with bioinformatics studies. We have PhD scholars in our department who are computer engineers and they are working in uh, bioinformatics and they have got their degree for it. So this is how information technology, pharmaceuticals, agriculture, medical devices and equipments, chemical manufacturing, nanotechnology today is a hype. Facilities and infrastructure management are some of the areas where people are working with and you have digital healthcare, telemedicine, quantum computing, biological computing, optics involved with computer uh, engineers to come out with devices. And uh, today the trend in America is uh, you have a lot of uh, old people alone at home who need a care uh, always, but they cannot afford having a doctor full time. So doctors again cannot be uh, to just stick to one patient. That is when this cloud computing and tele um, medicine process is going on where all of these devices, portable devices, this concept is called point of care. All devices just next to the patient is made available and assessed. Just a nurse can take care of these or if the patient uh, himself or herself is potential enough, they can just share the data to the uh, computer, which goes to a cloud. From there, it is dispensed to a specialist. Specialists get back to the patient through uh, telecommunication only and give the information back of what should be the uh, progress and what should be the treatment for the patient. Every day monitoring is required. Uh, that's how uh, the patient is monitored from a distance that is telemedicine. Then uh, chemicals, as I told you, uh, involves industrial biotechnology, molecular electronics, and working with proteins, peptides in uh, pharma industry, we do use this. So this is all biotech industry relating uh, to all the branches of engineering. There's one more picture to show you that you can have career associated with biotechnology in an R&D section. Uh, believe me, if you talk about all of these companies like IBM or Wipro or TCS, they have life science uh, sec sector also with them. GE Electricals, okay, uh, Wipro, all of these have health uh, sciences and healthcare, and they are uh, giving lot of importance to this sector. So if you have an engineering degree with a knowledge of biology in some or the other way of a course done or a minor uh, specialization in, you will be a part of this R&D team. So this is how you have discovery research, preclinical research, pharmaceutical product development, where you can be a member, project management, where you can be a part of it, clinical development, regulatory affairs and medical affairs of approvals of some of the instruments for the protocol may also you can be involved in. In operations, they can be bioinformatics, quality, and manufacturing may one can be associated with. Commercial operations, yes, just not the part, the matter, or the material or an instrument should be ready. It should be taken to the next level of either technology transfer or a patent and uh, um, uh, releasing out into the market. So marketing, sales, product support, business development, corporate communication is one field. If you are interested in uh, MBA in future, you can be associated with biotech industries uh, involved in it. Having uh, this engineering knowledge and want to get specialized in IPR, intellectual property rights, you can be associated with law, recruiting, venture capital, and management consultants. So these are some of the four major areas that are relevant to industry, services, research and development, operations, and commercial operations. So based on your interest, one can be a part of any one of this. And uh, today we talk about biopharma to be the most contributor, that is this. 
and you can see other uh, fundings or uh, uh, the money uh, being invested in bioservices, bioindustrial, bioagri and bioinformatics. But major thing today we talk about is boom is in biopharma industry. So the present scenario is the Indian biotech industry has acquired considerable clout in the international arena also. There are many transnational corporations which are now interested in locating their facilities in India. This has spurred many Indian national and multinational companies to expand their activities in biotech sector. That is when I'm telling you all of these industries, uh, name it, they are around. Earlier we knew biotech means biocon, but now no. Biocon, though involved in enzymes, vaccines, and biopharmaceutical product development with uh, other criteria, also we see IBM, Wipro, TCS, GE, uh, healthcare has come up. The GE is General Electrical that has come up with this. All of these are entered into the market of biotechnology because they know that this is the boom today. And uh, with this, uh, the opportunities are quite open. Several assignments have been given from abroad as outsourced projects to India. And we do work. And most of our clinical research uh, uh, specialists work for those pharma and uh, medical uh, industries abroad. And they work here because here and the facilities, the resource, and the expertise and uh, the economy is uh, very feasible for them to get the work done so this has uh, this have come in the segment of uh, r and d where global entities are utilizing the talent pool of indian science located in corporate houses and in uh, government funded institutes so a lot of funding goes with such projects so people are working on that and uh, utilizing it uh, it's clear with the National Biotech Development Strategy of the Department of Biotechnology that massive growth for the biotech industry in India is imminent. Uh, an ambitious uh, target of five bio uh, revenue with a million jobs created uh, in 2010 was very much achieved. But now also in today's scenario, it's a biopharma industry after COVID uh, pandemic that we have come across. So this is the present scenario that uh, it is essential that many capable and in biotechnology professionals of India set up enterprises to provide jobs instead of just looking for jobs. So there is a lot of opportunity of entrepreneurship, small, small scale, may, it, which can range from one lakh to a hundred lakhs. Also people have been working with. It is very uh, conceivable to make their investment a success just as we are celebrating the amazing achievements of the entrepreneurs in the software sector, people are into biotech sector also achieving these laurels. So these entrepreneurs come from diverse background, so which is also the need of the art for Indian biotech sector. These days, software engineers are getting exhausted at a very early age of uh, 40 years and moving towards our organic farming. And you have a lot of stories said in better india you can uh, uh, have a look at those and then uh, investment opportunities are also there uh, with ranging from one lakh to 100 lakhs as i told you bankable projects uh, reports are pre prepared all products will be given either a buyback or marketing tie up payback periods have been worked out with optimum investment loan or venture capital from banks can be arranged easily for any of the biotech sector. So in future, if you have this uh, uh, knowledge of any of these biological aspect and want to work with uh, an entrepreneurship with uh, minimal experience, you can move towards. And uh, the career opportunities, if you are looking for, it can be in the field of forensic science, medical scientists, microbiologists, Coming out with a microscope, coming out with a 3D microscope, coming out with uh, cameras, important to understand biological aspects, coming out with instruments like scanning electron microscopy, transmission electron microscopy to understand this virus. All of these things are so important these days. But it's just not microbiologists who study the 
microorganism under the microscope. It is the instrumentation that has helped them understand things better. So you as engineers can contribute to this. Environmental biotechnologists, as I told you, can be uh, involved in any of the protocols of environmental effluents or soil or uh, keeping the air clean. Today, uh, you might have heard of uh, Delhi being affected with smog. So if you know smog, it is a combination of smoke and fog. So in this cold uh, temperature, the precipitate is formed with the help of smog that's emitted uh, by uh, smoke emitted by the vehicles. So that is a pollution that is there. It forms a thick layer uh, early in the mornings, uh, having a precipitate. And you can see series of accidents happening over uh, in the highways and other places because of uh, poor visibility. And this is a problem that uh, uh, the government did work with odd and even aspect, but that didn't help. And if you Google today, they have set up what is called uh, um, towers to remediate the air. The concept is the particulate matters were studied and there were engineers who came out with these towers fitted in uh, some of the important areas which sucks the air, the polluted air, filters and give back uh, clean air. So that is the engineering aspect that is involved in environmental biodiversity. The one or two examples I'm telling you, if you look around, there are many. General just who look into all the protocols uh, to understand the chromosomes and the DNA at that level. So without those instruments around, we can't work with it. Molecular biotechnologists and the demand. So one has to get associated with an academic uh, institute or an industry to understand what the problem lies. So all of these engineers um, uh, come out with solutions epidemiologists and R&D scientists. So these are some of the areas uh, with immense career scope in biotechnology. Employment is good. It is told that employment of bi biological technicians is uh, projected to grow 7% from 2020 to 2030 and uh, about as fast as average for all other occupations. 11,800 openings for biological technicians are projected each year just in India on an average over the decade. So these are some of the data that I could get referencing is what I have given. And the future in biotechnology is biotechnology and applied sciences is the future of the world uh, where biotech sector in India is projected to grow by 30.46 GR by 2025, making India stand almost the top 12 biotech destinations in the world. So that's the uh, need of biotechnology. Now, uh, getting to know if I enter into a pharma industry, what would my be my package? The annual salary um, can range from the company you are into as a starter from two. 0.29 is average taken up to rupees uh, 8 lakhs per year. It can go higher. I'm telling you just an average uh, salary package in pharma industry that is there. And if I have to talk about the countries that are involved uh, worldwide uh, in biopharma sector, uh, the best uh, thing that we see is in U.S., then Germany, then France, then Singapore, and uh, many more uh, follow, to follow. So uh, in, in US, an average annual wages and job opportunities uh, seen are like this. A biomedical engineer, if specialized in, will get around $91,410 per year, this per annum. A biochemist and biophysist uh, can get around 94,000 and odd biotechnology research scientists may get 87,000 and odd dollars and uh, biomanufacturing specialists may get 83,000, not a small amount, a microbiologist and a medical scientist you can see is a good amount of income that is there uh, if you are involved in any biotech sector being in the field whichever you are. India has become a vaccine hub now. 
Indian firms estimated to supply 90% of the global demand for measles vaccine uh, in the near future that they have achieved. Serum Institute in Pune is believed to be the world's largest manufacturer of DPT vaccine that is there. And uh, Indian Immunologies operates the world's second largest plant for veterinary vaccines and is also the world's largest manufacturer for vaccine against foot and mouth diseases. These are some general vaccines that I have, uh, the other vaccines that they were into. All of these firms moved to COVID vaccine these days. And you have some of these uh, industries involved in uh, the vaccine development. The five uh, branches into which modern technology falls in is work anything related to human, environment, industrial, animal, or plant. And thus, we are contributing towards fighting hunger and disease, produce more safe and clean environment, reduce our ecological footprint, and save energy. So these are the things we are looking for. And the future of biotechnologists is with many exciting discoveries to make and new problems to solve, biotechnology professionals can make a difference in the lives of others in many ways. So this sector or industry is a major economic driver, generating approximately $140 billion in revenue. So there is a bright future if you are associated with biotechnology. So this is one diagram where I could get to show you all the possible fields that are there associated with R&D, uh, services, operations, and commercial operations. So you can be associated with a discovery research in R&D. You can be associated with preclinical research or a biopharma product development, product management, clinical development, regulatory affairs, medical affairs, marketing, sales, product support, or corporate communications, business development, operations, quality, and uh, uh, one second, let me just move to the next. Sorry. So bio uh, IT, that is informatics, management consulting, and venture capital. So these are some of the areas where you can be associated with. The next two slides are uh, the slides uh, are the pioneers in biotechnology. You have heard of these names today. You know what are the industries that have contributed to the vaccines that we take. So we know the word. Biocon, Dr. Reddy's, uh, so Nicholas, Wukhart, Bharat, uh, Serums and Vaccine Limited, Panacea, uh, Shanta Biotech, Serum Institute of India are all good players. So if one can associate with this, they grow with the industry. Other than this, there are some multinational companies who have uh, uh, found uh, a very good platform in India to have that success like many uh, instrumentation is involved in BioRide, can have a knowledge of these industries so that you can uh, try uh, later in your lifetime. If you, in this in this uh, platform of engineering, if you can get to work with uh, some of the internships or get into their labs to work with some of the instruments associated with pharma industry. BioRide, no Novo Nordisk, Aventis, Lily, Millipore, um, Amarsham, um, Biosciences, Sartorius. Sartorius and Millipore are into this uh, simple devices that gives us good water also and good bioreactors also. BD is one, the lab vantage, Roche. Uh, here the salary packages are so good. Monsanto, Quintiles, uh, Agilent. All of these are some of the industries that we are associated for our lab instruments are uh, medical instruments and uh, people who are associated with these industries uh, are doing wonders so that is where you can explore your career opportunity so that's one thing and india is advantageous 
and have a good scope is because of excellent network of research laboratories, well-developed base industries, rich biodiversity, and extensive clinical trial opportunities, and trained manpower and knowledge base. So these are some of the advantages of having a base in India, industries having a base in India. So these are some of the fields that we are into. I have given an overview of those important fields. Just a repetition that one can be associated with a medical biotechnology field where uh, you can work with uh, diseases for diagnosis as well as therapy. And uh, these days people are working uh, involving microbes or a bioprocess uh, in the engineering. If we talk about this, all of our uh, biotech engineers also learn about mass transfer, heat transfer, thermodynamics, or uh, process calculations, bioreactor designs, unit operations are some of the subjects that one go through because they need expertise to be uh, engineers in biology. The same way many of you as mechanical engineers would have studied, would, will be studying the same subjects where you also are competitive enough to be a part of such industries in medical field. So take it clinical, surgical, or any other medical situation. Problems that are worked out today are with a combination of these engineers. Synthetic insulin and synthetic growth hormones today and diagnostic tests to detect various diseases are done um, with the aid of engineers involved in medical biotechnology. So that is medical biotechnology. One more field I told you is genetic engineering where people work with bacteria to modify and improve for some societal applications uh, like they may be worked to uh, bring in a solution to oil spill uh, in, uh, in a sea or to bring in environmental pollution down uh, to bring in bioremediation that is an aspect that is there or engineer the bacteria for uh, the area of uh, improvement in animal husbandry. Uh, the vaccines are modified based on these engineering aspect only. Today, we talk about two types of vaccines to COVID. One is the same virus inactivated and given, put into our body to bo for the body to recognize and produce antibodies. So you are might be familiar with all these terms now. Uh, so that is one. The other uh, vaccine is where only proteins that are there, the spikes that are there on the surface is expressed in some other virus and which is non-pathogenic and that is put into the body to get recognized. In both the cases, body will recognize and produce antibodies which will help us in the survival. So that is how you know the need of uh, uh, things also today. That is, uh, you know, the importance of... Uh, uh, what is called uh, uh, booster doses. So booster doses also are given for this reason only, that if an antibody titer is what is uh, not uh, there, uh, then there is a need for the uh, titer to be activated. So that is where in genetic engineering plays an important role. And uh, we have... Uh, one more field, as I told you, of bioinformatics, where genomics, proteomics, and pharmacogenomics play an important role. So that's this concept, where uh, study of genes and entire process of their organization is studied with the aid of computers. Proteomics is study of all the proteins of the organism and have a bank, gen bank, uh, proteome bank. We have a lot of databases that are helping us out in the protocol. So all of these things need the aid of computer engineers involved in the process. There is an aspect of pharmacogenomics where new drug discovery is based on in silico. In silico is informatics. And that is needed for a lot of uh, uh, disease and disease treatments. Environmental biotechnology, I told you, is applicable in a lot of fields. We are working towards having a biogas plant to uh, handle the waste. In turn, uh, the design of that biogas uh, units, uh, right? All of those are uh, take water management. 
each one of our organization hosting around uh, more than 2000 uh, people on campus uh, would have a waste water treatment plant it's civil engineers who design these things and they work for us there is a simple protocol of reusing and uh, the waste water that is generated in the campus there is something called grey water grey water is the one that comes from uh, kitchen waste and all the kitchen canteens and uh, your labs and from the bathrooms of hostels if there are any in the uh, campus so that water can be reused so that is taken to a place collected in for a simple protocol of primary treatment then they subject it to microorganisms for secondary treatment with aeration where all the organic matter is degraded and it is allowed to settle sediment is taken out as a sludge clean water is transferred to a next uh, level of tank for tertiary treatment to carry out where you pass it through coal and sand filters and you also do chlorination to remove all the bacteria that and algae that you would have added in the secondary treatment and uh, with this you will get clean water out that is how recycling of water is done at a uh, simple organization like our educational institutes i'm sure uh, uh, the campus will have you just with interest can go have a look at it so in if you have to differentiate all those pipelines it is civil engineers who would be involved in separating out the grey water from black water black water is a toilet water which cannot be treated it's only the grey water that can be taken to and you know you have such good gardens trees and the lawns that are there on campus or flushing of uh, the same water into the flush tank is can be taken care so with this you are conserving the water that is there around so that's one field you can contribute to and uh, composting as i told you using worms or without is a simple protocol of handling the wet waste food waste generated i'm sure it goes in kgs of waste generated on a campus that can be taken care hazardous soil pollution can be taken care by microorganisms we add intentionally microbes to remediate the toxins that are there bio mining is a process bio leaching is a process that is there today so with a combination of these abiotic and biotic factors we can bring in a good life and environment around because we are moving into rapid urbanization globalization all contribute to uh, unhealthy things around so see if a bio treatment can help in its place or out of its place there are many remediating industries set up they are again booming all expiry dated food products or uh, waste is what goes to them after collection and they manage the waste so thus exitu is taken out from the ground to a place of recovery or in situ in its place some of the uh, soil and other things are treated that's the concept and uh, that that's about some of the applications in environmental field that i wanted to talk about and the last one is industrial or white uh, or gray biotechnology where we use microorganisms to produce lot of food products if you have varieties of yogurts today if you have varieties of uh, probiotic drinks uh, helping you with the process if you have many of these multivitamin tablets that you are consuming in this covid era it's all because of the food industry or a bio based industry that is booming today so you know the importance of probiotic drink if you have come across in your uh, grocery shop uh, on the on the shelves you will find a drink called yakut it's such a simple drink read on it what is that what you are consuming is millions of spores into the body to take care of your health if you have come across this logic if you have gone through a treatment of and treatment of a disease with antibiotics you would get a uh, lot of side effects side effects are uh, you will get um, boils in the mouth you will find weakness you will have uh, taste change the taste change not because of covid there is a different uh, thing you don't feel 
to eat things. Uh, all this is because of the vitamin deficiencies that are there. You might be aware of good bacteria that is there in our stomach that is called E. coli. And you should be aware that E. coli is managing everything in your stomach in a normal condition. And if you have taken antibiotic, it kills uh, damaging bacteria along with this bacteria is also killed. That is when you need a supplement of vitamin during that period. I don't know how many of you follow this. As long as you are on antibiotic treatment, you have to take a multivitamin every day because your E. coli in the stomach are lost and you won't get the required uh, vitamins for which you have to uh, be very uh, careful. So this is one logic with which you should live. Just not that. Today, to boost immunity, people talk about uh, vitamin C. C plus is what we all are into. Zinc is what is important. So that's one thing that is there. And if you have to supplement, it's good to consume one probiotic drink, which is good bacteria put into your body to take care of those things. If you don't want to be on synthetic drugs, you can be on natural foods that are there. So this is all uh, some industries that are uh, involving engineers to come out with machinery and other logical instruments to bring in these food products into market, food and feed for animals as well as humans, paper and pulp industry needs uh, people, textile industry, chemical industry, tanning industry, detergent industry, bioenergy industry, all of these industries need engineers. Biofertilizers use microbes to enhance the quality of seeds, insecticides, pesticides, uh, fertilizers that may be applied to grow plants, uh, and good nutrition. We talk about biofuels from biomass. So we take, we grow plants today to be utilized for biofuel production. We talk about uh, Uttarakhand and uh, other places who, where government used to support the, the growth of or growing of plant called Jetrupa. Why? Because those seeds were used for biodiesel production. So government used to give subsidies. Government used to support farmers to grow those plants and give it to them so that they produce good biofuels. Such is a demand that is there around. So one has to just keep things open and ears and eyes open to understand what is the demand around and work towards that. Biomass does... Uh, are helpful in transforming into biofuels. So you grow bamboo, you grow jetropa for this purpose only to get biofuels out of it, which may be bioethanol and biodiesel. Microbial technology uses a um, lot of microbes to culture in bulk to be used in fermentation process. And then you purify and pack the products and give it to market. And the last thing that we are involved today is in green chemistry, where we ha have a sustainable chemistry that is there relating to the design of chemical products and protocols where no hazardous and toxic chemicals are used in the protocol. So these are some of the areas which uh, we are exploring. And this is the demand of uh, biotechnology or bioproducts that are there. And uh, you have a good uh, career either in universities or research institutes or chemical industries, agricultural companies, aquaculture, food manufacturers, and in pharma firms. So in short, the students equipped with the skills of biotechnology involved in planning, production, and management may be engaged in business related to life sciences ranging from equipment to chemicals to pharmaceuticals and diagnostics and alternatively they may find employment in specialized biotechnology companies or biotech related organizations this is the scope of the work can range from getting into research getting into sales marketing administration quality control breeding and uh, technical uh, aspects so pharma companies um, in, are involved in breweries, healthcare services, environmental department, and many other drug uh, producers that require biotechnology. 
and the pharmaceutical company is the present most opportunities of work that you find in. So you can just relate yourself to this. Computer science engineers, the field of computer application in biotechnology is a hybrid between biosciences and computer technology. I told you about bioinformatics. In case of process analytics and advanced process control and administration, you can be associated with, and they are internal and essential positions in biopharmaceutical manufacturing that uh, computer science engineers hold. Lab automation and controls and instruments software is what you can develop and uh, contribute towards. So those computer science engineers can be associated with this. And uh, electronics engineers may be involved in development and implementation of a new class of polymers that possess a unique optical and electromagnetic potential in um, almost all the biosensors that we spoke about today. So development of medical and laboratory instruments may they can contribute. R&D in display technology is a trend that is there. So this resulted in one of the most efficient and crisp display technology called OLED today. So everywhere, wherever we talk of any screen and display uh, in any of these biosensor instruments, this is in demand. Mechanical engineering, where R&D in medical instrumentation is aiming to reduce the size and contain the radiations in image, uh, imagery technology, these people can contribute. Not only that, as I told you earlier, medical engineers can contribute towards modern equipment design and um, production uh, for modern agriculture technology. So these are some of the areas where one can uh, contribute to and uh, thus irrespective of uh, the field you are in, uh, this is what I uh, want you people to uh, get aware of what is biology and the role of it and the importance of it in whichever field uh, you have. So this is uh, the knowledge that I wanted to share, what I have with you people, being engineers can contribute uh, with getting associated uh, with the thing, biology. Is that clear? Any doubts? It's fine. Otherwise, I'll stop the class here for today. <clears throat> so thank you.